these two columns, 6 and 11, are your exceptions to the rules of the electron configurations. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Okay? The first one we're going to start off with is chromium. Okay? CR. Now, I'm going to start out writing the electron configuration of chromium just like you've learned in the previous videos. Okay? However, it's going to be wrong, so I'm going to go ahead and put an X here because it's an exception. Okay. Now, basically, if you would write the electron configuration the way that you've learned from me so far, you would have written 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, then finally, 3D, 1, 2, 3, 4. 3D, 4. Well, this is actually wrong. And let me explain to you why. Oh, here in this partially filled D orbital, it's almost halfway full. So since it's almost halfway full, it's almost as if this element just gets ticked off that it's almost partially filled. Now remember, orbitals want to be 100% filled, but if they can't be 100% filled, they at least want to be half filled. This one is one short of that. So it's going to go off. It's mad. So basically, this 3D is going to go over and talk to 4S2. Now I know I'm explaining this childishly, but sometimes this helps. It's going to go over, the 3D 4 is going to go over and talk to the 4S2 and say, hey, look, you're completely filled. You are the outermost orbital, meaning you got the highest quantum number and uh, highest principal quantum number, and you're completely full. Me, I'm still kind of starving because I'm not even half full. So they decide, well, to be content, make both of them happy, 4S2 decides to loan an electron to the 3D4. So it changes from being 2 to 1 and the 3D4 then becomes a 3D5. So the correct way to write the electron configuration of chromium is basically 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, then 4s1, 3d5. Now this is the correct way to write the electron configuration of chromium. Now it's neutral. Now if you notice here, the valence electron account remained unchanged. That's 6 and so was this. Okay, so the valence electron count is not affected by this. Okay, and neither is it being uh, paramagnetic or diamagnetic. It doesn't change it. So the valence electron is still uh, 6 and as far as diamagnetic or paramagnetic, it's still paramagnetic because it's only partially filled. Okay. Now let's look at an ion of it. Now one common ion of chromium is Cr plus 2. Basically you got to lose two balance electrons. Now if you look back up here at chromium, uh, you have to look at the one that it's supposed to be correct, not the one that's wrong. Look here. Now, you've got to throw away two electrons. You would throw away the one with the highest principal quantum number first, which is the 4s1. But when you get rid of 4s1, that's only one valence electron. Okay? So you got to end up throwing away another one here. So basically, the correct electron configuration of, the, of Cr plus 2 is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Now we're going to throw away the 4s1. When I do that, that's one electron thrown away, but I need to throw away two. So I'm going to throw away one more, more from the 3d5 and make it a 3d4. Now as far as valence electron counts on this goes, this is going to be 12 because you've got 2 plus 6, which is 8. 8 plus 4 is 12. So that's 12 valence electrons. Now as far as d or p, if it's paramagnetic or diamagnetic, remember, diamagnetic, done. Paramagnetic, partially filled. This is partially filled still. Now, um, let's do another one of chromium. Another uh, common ion of chromium is Cr plus 3, 
meaning you got to throw away three valid electrons. Once again, look back up here at the the correct way of writing chromium. You need to throw away three electrons. If you throw away the 4s1, that's just one electron. So you need to throw away two more from here, and it'll be 3d3. So that would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. And remember, we're going to throw away the 4s1, that's one. But we need to throw away two more, so that'd be 3d what? Remember, we got to throw away two here. So that'd be 3d3. So valence electron account of this, well, 2 plus uh, 6 is 8. 8 plus 3 is 11. Paramagnetic or diamagnetic, guess what? Still paramagnetic because the d orbital is partially filled. Okay, that's one of the exceptions. Uh, another exception that we need to look at is copper. Let's do Cu. Uh, copper, now, since it's an exception and it's at the 3 uh, D9, we're going to do it. Okay, I'm going to write it down incorrectly first, just to show you. Here, it's an exception. Okay, now, the electron configuration, if you would write it the way that you learned uh, how to write all the others, would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, then finally, 3d what? 9. Now let me explain to you why this is wrong. This is wrong because notice here copper only has one valence electron if it's neutral. But if you look at the electron configuration the way that we've written it, we're showing that it's 11. We know it should just be 1. So what gives? Well remember, <sighs> orbitals want to be 100% filled or half filled. So basically this 3D9 is going to go talk to 4S1 and say, hey look, can I borrow one of your electrons so I can be completely full because I'm so close and I'm irritable to almost being full. And you can still be happy and content being half filled. So basically the 4S says, sure, why not? It gives it willingly an electron. So the 4S2 becomes a 4S1. The 3D9 becomes a 3D10. So basically the correct way of writing Cu is an electron configuration then is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1, and 3d10. Now remember, valence electron count of this one's really just one because its highest principal quantum number, its outer orbital, highest energy level is 4s1 with one electron. But check out this d orbital. It is, only par it is not partially filled, but completely filled. Since it's completely filled with a 3d10, you don't count it. So that's one valence electron. <laughs> that's why. Now, if it's diamagnetic or paramagnetic, well, don't know. Let's see. Uh, is everything completely filled? No. This is only half filled, so it's partially filled, so it's paramagnetic. Okay, let's look at another uh, uh, one of these. We're going to look at an ion of this. Okay, Cu plus 1, copper 1 ion. Okay, basically, it's got to throw away an electron. Where is it going to throw an electron away from? It's going to throw away the 4s1 because it's the highest energy level, highest energy level, and the largest principal quantum number 4. So it's going to throw away the 4s1. So the Cu plus 1 is 1s2. 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Remember, it throws away the 4s1 because it's got to throw away one electron from the outermost orbital, the highest energy level, or basically the highest principal quantum number, okay, which is the 4. So the 4s1's gone, leaving you with 3d10. Now the valence electron count on this is, well, the highest principal quantum numbers is these threes here. So that's 2 plus 6 is 8. But this d orbital, it is completely filled, but it's from the same principal quantum number, basically the highest energy level. It's still in the same. So since there's no break in there, then we get what is known as a uh, pseudo electron configuration, basically meaning there are 18 electrons here. Wow, 18 valence electrons. That is nuts, but it's true. Now, is it diamagnetic or is it paramagnetic? Well, since everything is full, even though there's a skip there of that energy level, even though everything's full that's shown, it's done. It's diamagnetic.